You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode about entrepreneurship. I really appreciate the feedback that I've had so far about the entrepreneurship series. And this episode is going to be about one of the topics that people have asked me to cover, which is the question of going into business with other people. What are the issues surrounding going into a startup with friends or other business associates or whoever? You know, what are the kind of considerations that you face when you decide to go into business with other people? And I think this is one of the most important questions that you face uh, in terms of entrepreneurship is your decision whether or not to work with others and how you're going to get along working together, sharing a business. And it's one of those areas where I think there are a number of decisions to be made that will be different for individuals. So I will talk about my experience, but I also think that the most useful thing would be to talk about what I think the key questions are that you face uh, when starting a new business and thinking about going into business with other people. And then you can decide for yourself what you think the right answer for you is. In this podcast, I hope to outline the questions and to provide some idea of maybe the pros and cons of each side. But ultimately, it's an art, not a science. And so you have to decide for yourself um, what you think the right answer is for you. To start with, I think the first big question that you face when starting a business um, is, are you going into business with yourself as the only owner of the business, or will you share ownership with other people? There are different views on this, and there are arguments for and against going into business with other people. I remember hearing um, Guy Kawasaki talk um, about this question And his view was that you need to have people to share this journey with because mainly because of the emotional um, burden of doing entrepreneurship. It's so stressful. It's such a difficult job and so forth that his view was you want to have sort of fellow travelers, um, comrades, people who you can really uh, share the experience with and that that's something that you need to sort of keep you going. Um, and I heard him present that argument in a, in a talk once. I also uh, received the advice uh, when I was starting a business or when I was thinking about starting a business to find the best people in the field uh, where I was working um, and, you know, get them on board if I could. At the time, I was doing some postgraduate research um, at a university and... Someone who sort of provided me with mentoring advice uh, suggested that I should really seek out the best people involved in this area and ask them if they would like to start up with me. And the idea being that you want to have other people with other skills, you know, the the benefits of having complementary skills and different strengths. And you basically, you know, you form a kind of bigger team. That argument was something that um, was presented to me. Now, on the other hand... There are people who strongly argue against going into business with other people. For example, Harry Brown in his book, uh, How to Find Freedom in an Unfree World, he makes the argument that you should avoid um, going into business with other people as as much as possible. Uh, it's great to have subcontractors and professional consultants who who have their own businesses and advise you and help you and to commission them to do specific tasks to help you grow your business. But he strongly um, suggests that you, wherever possible, don't get locked into actually joint ownership of a business with other people. The idea being, uh, or the argument being, that this limits your freedom because you're both then stuck together and you're both co-owners and and you you have to uh, share decision-making and you basically have less freedom. And another person that has made the argument against this is Felix Dennis, um, an entrepreneur who wrote a book called How to Get Rich. And 
Felix Dennis makes the argument that when you start a business, the only thing you have really is the ownership of the business and the business hasn't even really started yet. So he makes the argument purely on sort of financial grounds, don't give away ownership to other people. Avoid that at all costs because that ultimately is going to be the way that you get financial freedom and the way that you get, in his words, the way that you get rich is don't give away ownership. So he makes a kind of financial argument about this is one of the most expensive decisions that you can make um, and it's much better to pay people good money to work for you or to work as sub-consultants to you rather than going into business with them. So there are different views on this. Uh, myself, I can see both sides of the argument. I can definitely see um, the arguments for and against. And I do think that it's a very, very important decision. I did go into business uh, with other people. There were two people that I approached when I started um, my business. Uh, one of them dropped out almost immediately and the other one became my business partner and we worked together for 11 years growing the business and eventually selling it so I did share ownership of my business um, I had a 50 50 um, partner and you know the business itself did really well it definitely worked out for me but working with other people and in particular sharing ownership is one of the most difficult things about entrepreneurship and I'll say a little bit more about that as I go on so I also found the the question of sharing a business to be a very very difficult one and it can cause a lot of stress too so that's the first sort of um, question that you face but let's let's suppose that you do want to go into business with other people you do intend to share ownership of a business with other people what are the other questions that you are going to face and, and what kind of decisions are you going to have to make about how you go about sharing ownership? Well, the first question that you get confronted with is the question of ownership itself. How do you divide ownership of your business? Ownership itself is embodied normally if it's a limited company in the percentage split of shares there may be different classes of shares with different special voting rights and so forth. It can get very complicated, but ultimately it just boils down to how the ownership of the company is split. And I've never read any very good principles about how this is done. Obviously, you have to come to a decision which works for everyone and everyone is happy with. And... For me, the principles governing that decision are going to probably revolve around the level of risk that each person is willing to put into the business and also some consideration of whether or not there are different levels of value that they're going to be able to add to the business. That's very, very hard to determine when you're just getting started and there aren't really any principles that you can turn to and the level of value that each individual is, is able to add is going to change over time. My experience was that I was in a 50-50 business partnership with one partner. We were both fully committed to the project. We both put our life savings into the business to get it started and both left jobs and worked full time and so on and so forth. Other people have had slightly different experiences where there may be one person who's not 100% committed and they're going to have a more peripheral role and so forth. And I don't really know any good principles to determine this. Um, but I would say that I think when you have nothing in the beginning and you're just starting out, if you find yourself spending a huge amount of time arguing about what that split of ownership is going to be, it's probably not a good start. And it's probably indicative that this might not be a good idea uh, in the first place. It is an absolutely crucial decision, but if you can't agree it and get going, then I think that means there's questions about whether or not it's a good idea anyway. The next key question that I think you face, that you have to make a decision about, is the question of incentivization. And what I mean by that is, you start a business with yourself and one or two or three or however many other people and you're all very excited and very enthusiastic and you get going and then you find down the line 
that maybe you are working your ass off and working extremely hard and so is one of your friends and another one you know doesn't really seem to come along when you decide to meet up and talk about next steps and doesn't seem to get things done and doesn't seem to be that interested but you've all decided on this split of the business and you're all original directors or shareholders or whatever what do you do how do you actually incentivize performance from those people who share ownership of the business and how do you prevent the free rider problem and this is something that um, there's a documentary movie called startup.com which followed a startup from the beginning and, and it shows this problem exactly there's a group of people who chose to start a business two of them are working away at it and the third one just doesn't show up and doesn't do anything but still holds shares in the company and they're already starting to get investment and they have this guy who is a real dead weight in the business and they have to work out what to do about it and they have no mechanism to incentivize his performance and that is a real question you know, I think you have to decide how are you going to make sure that each of you whatever your ownership levels are that each of you actually brings the value that you need to the business and does things not on the basis of what you find particularly interesting but on the basis of what the business needs to grow in my own experience we found after a couple of years of get, just getting going that we simply weren't making enough profit to start paying off our startup debts and to, to, to really grow the company we had a real question of sales and profitability we were doing very well in many other respects and there was lots of nice things about the company but we weren't making enough sales and we weren't making enough profit and there was also the question of well, what happens if one of us starts to make a whole lot more profit and a whole lot more sales than the other and how do you prevent resentment from starting to build up and the way that we approached it is that we developed a partner incentive plan for the two partners of the business which was a mechanism whereby things that matter to the business like sales volume and profitability of the projects had a direct relationship to uh, financial gain of individual partners in the end so it was essentially a bonus scheme that we agreed now that's the way that we tackled it and you don't have to tackle it that way and it may be that in your business there are other things that are really important it may not be sales or profitability it might be something else but ultimately whatever the key issues are for the business everyone who goes into business together has to work out what they're going to do about the question of how to incentivize and encourage the performance of the owners themselves so that there's no free riders and there's no potential for resentment to build up if one person is putting a hell of a lot more into business than the other because the issue is if you're an owner of a business and the business makes a profit and the business pays out dividends on on the shares then you will receive those dividends whether or not you have worked hard or not for the business and the question is what happens if one person or a couple of people in the business feel like they've actually done a lot more to grow the business this year and they start thinking that one or that one of the other directors or partners isn't doing as much how do you work out a way to stop that from turning into a situation where feelings of injustice and resentment can build up and of course how do you make it fair uh, and make the business provide for the people who are adding value to the business in a way that is changing with the times and is sustainable because it could be that somebody who wasn't providing that much in the beginning starts to provide a lot more later down the line and that needs to be reflected in some way in order for everyone to perceive the results as being fair and to feel motivated the next key question that I want to talk about that I think everyone faces if they go into business with others is how are you going to make decisions how are you going to get decisions made and what do you do specifically to prevent deadlock so for example uh, you may have some kind of voting mechanism or whatever it is but you need to decide some way to make decisions and for everyone to be able to feel that decisions are being made in a way that um, moves the company forward 
but also um, is fair. Now, this is a particularly important question if there's only two directors or partners, as there was in my case. And we had a 50-50 split of share ownership, which is an, a total recipe for deadlock. Now, this is one of the things that did not work as well in our business, because it meant that if we disagreed about anything, then ultimately we had to talk it out until we could find an agreement. And there was definitely an efficiency loss in that. And also it was a cause of a lot of frustration for both of us. That was definitely something that, that um, I found to be a really difficult and frustrating aspect of sharing ownership of a business. Now, the flip side of that is that you could argue that the fact that we both had to agree to something meant that we really had to be able to think through and argue through properly and make a good case for decisions that we were making. And you could argue that that helped us because it meant that you know there were two minds working on a problem. You had to really work it through and so forth. So there are arguments both ways. Ultimately, for me, looking back on it, it was one of the things that I found stressful. Whether or not ultimately it did benefit me, it was still one of the things that I found uh, very a cause of a lot of stress. And I think you will have to decide if you're going to be in business with other people what the mechanism is going to be to prevent decision-making deadlock. In my opinion, it's really important, however you choose to do it, that you have an efficient way of making decisions so that you can get on with the business because so many decisions have to be made. It's really important that there is a mechanism there that everyone's agreed to, which means that you know if there's something to be decided, it's going to get done and you can move on. Now, this brings me to the last question to think about if you're going into business with other people. And this is one that a lot of people completely miss. They blow right past even thinking about this and they just rush into business with each other. And that is exactly what I did. Um, But it's a really important decision which you need to think about and have some kind of answer for yourself. And that is, what do you do if one of the business owners doesn't want to be in business with the others anymore. What happens if one of you has had enough and wants to get out? How are you going to handle that? I hadn't even considered that question when we started. And luckily, I didn't need to consider that question because we ended up selling the business and both of us were really, really happy with that um, as a strategy. And so that worked really well. My business partner now still works for the company that we sold to and is very happy with it. And I am very happy having sold and left completely. So it worked out for both of us. However, it's always possible that one of you will want to sell the business and the other one won't, or one of you will just want to give up on the business and the other one won't, or any combination for multiple people involved. And it's also possible that you'll stop getting on and that you'll stop wanting to work with each other. Uh, Business is really, really stressful, and that is a possibility too. You might just have had enough of each other. You might have different visions for the company. Like all the bands, you might just want to go your separate ways because of musical differences, as they say. I think the important thing is just to have a strategy in place as to what you're going to do if such a situation arises. Now, one of the things that we considered before we sold the company was to draw up an agreement about what would happen if we faced this question. And we took some advice from various people on things that you can do. And the mechanism that we were looking at is a pretty good one, I think. And it's um, based on the idea uh, that you will remember from childhood of I'll cut, you choose. So in other words, if you have a slice of cake and you're going to share it with a friend, then you have this thing where you cut the cake in half, but the other person gets to choose which half they want. And consequently, you know, you have to cut it as fairly as you like, and they get to choose to ensure to sort of enforce that fairness. And the way that this is applied in a business sense is that if you're in a partnership or a co-director's co-ownership of a business with others, then you can have a clause in your partner's agreement or your director's agreement, which says that if any partner or director wants to leave the business, then they have to 
provide a proposal, which is to say, I want one of two things. Either I want this level of payout to myself and I leave the business, or you take the same level of payout and you leave the business and I retain ownership of what's left. So in other words, you can't just demand, I want this much money and then I'll leave. You have to allow for either case to be chosen by the other person. So you can say, look, we have different ideas about where to take this business. So one of us has to go. So it's up to you. Either I'm the person who goes and you pay me this amount of money or it's the other way around. You're the person who goes and you get that same amount of money. And then it's up to the other person to decide, you know, if they feel that that is a really generous payout and that they would not want to be owning the business and having to fork out that much money to let you leave, then they can take the payout and they can leave. On the other hand, if they think the payout's pretty cheap, then they can pay you the payout and you can leave and they get to retain the value in the business. So that's one mechanism that you can agree in advance. The other thing that I've heard in advance is that people just agree certain conditions. Like they agree in advance that anyone who leaves has to give back all their shares. So in other words, there's no payout. You just like, if you leave, you give up everything. That's certainly extremely simple. But the downside of that, I think, is that it would incentivize people to take as much income every year and disincentivize investing in the growth of the business. Because basically, if you know that when you're going to leave, you're not taking any value with you, then you're sort of de-incentivized from actually growing the business itself. So personally, I, I see some downsides to that that they would certainly need to have some way to address. But that's just another approach that other people have. Whichever approach you choose, the key thing I think is to have in your own mind some kind of strategy for what's going to happen if you fall out or if you go have different views about where the business should go, how are you going to tackle going your separate ways and to agree that in advance so that you know that you both have the freedom to do your own thing if you want to. I hope that's helpful. I would really be very interested to hear any feedback that you have about this question of going into business with others and if you think that there are any other key questions that need to be faced uh, when looking at this um, going into business with others uh, please let me know um, I look forward to any feedback thank you so much for listening thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life if you have feedback about the show please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com if you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.